Hey, good morning, Foundry fam. Man, we're missing seeing you guys in person today. Weird for me to be preaching to an empty room once again. However, I know that you are tuned in with us at home and filling your house with love, joy, peace, and hope this Christmas season, celebrating Advent. Uh, it's the last day of Advent uh, this Sunday. So, hey, you're celebrating it with us, and we're excited to, to light the candles soon. And, and, man, just continue to celebrate this season. We miss you guys like crazy. Hope you've had a phenomenal week. Uh, we have uh, been a little hectic, but all things are good. Uh, all things are good considering. So, hey, we're excited to be the Foundry Church, to be the church alive right now, making a difference in this world. I've had some help today to help me to light the candle, uh, our fourth and final candle, and that will be our candle of love. But before I do that, I want us to go ahead and light our other candles today. Uh, the first candle you may remember uh, when you gathered with us was the candle of hope. In Isaiah 7, 14, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, God with us, that gives us hope today and has for weeks now that God is with us, Emmanuel. The second candle that we lit was that of peace. Isaiah 9, 6, for unto us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. We light the peace candle together. And then last week, the third week, the middle point of our Advent candle lighting was that of joy. And it's a different color candle on purpose because joy is something that should be vibrant, should be different, should be tangible, something that we see. We read together Luke 10, 2, 10, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. So we lit the joy candle. And today we have some help from Hunter. He pre-recorded a video. Hunter Myers is the man. So excited to hear him. So he's going to help us to light our last candle, the candle of For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have a eternal life. John 3.16 Thank you so much, Hunter Myers. You did a great job, bud. We're going to go ahead and light the love candle. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. We're going to look at John 3.16 a little bit today, but we're also going to look into Matthew 22 as well. Uh, the first part of what we're going to be sharing today from John 3.16 is, you know, based out of a conversation that Jesus was having with an, a man named Nicodemus. And Nicodemus was concerned about how in the world can I be born again? And right now we're celebrating a season of birth of Christ our Savior. But we're also celebrating, I feel in this season, an expectation of being born again in Christ Jesus, that we have a chance, if we haven't made that decision for the first time, to experience new life in and only through Christ Jesus. So I think it's fitting when we're talking about love and, and a love that God gave to us because he so loved us that we start with John 3.16 and we start with this conversation that Jesus was having with Nicodemus and then we'll move into Matthew. Matthew 22 with another conversation. So let's break this down just a little bit. Again, this conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus really asking about how can I be born again? How can I experience true life? Can I experience real life in uh, this world in which I live? So we begin to explain and to define words. You know, I love doing that. A biblical love to, to welcome, to entertain, to be fond of, to love dearly. And we think about this, that, that God so loves us that he welcomes us in. This idea that we sit down and we, we, we reside with him. He entertains, we, we do life with him. And he looks at us and with great fondness, he looks in our eyes and, and we feel a dear love. And that he has this love for the world, the universe, and every single person in it. Think about that. The whole universe. 
And you may be heading into the Christmas season around some folks that can kind of be unlovable, maybe some co-workers, you know, maybe even some family and some friends. I don't know where you find yourself, but his love for the world, the universe, and every person in it, so much so that he gave, he gave of his own. He reached out, and you get this visual, this image of a loving, caring God who welcomes and seeks to entertain, to do life and be fond of us, to love dearly. He reaches out to all of us, and he brings this love, only of which he owns and which he has, and he delivers it to us. He loves us so much that he gave of what his one and only son. And think about this. You'll see that on the slide before you, that his one and only, it's, it's a one of a kind. It's the chosen one. There's no other Jesus. There's no other Savior. There's no other Messiah. There was only one. And when you look at this word son, his only son, there was no other kids, if you will. There was no other children that God designed and created, if you will, to come but Jesus, the son of God, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Jesus was the son, the son of man. And this is so important that we get that no one could do what Jesus came to do. For whoever, and I love this, this is really hard to define, whoever, whoever, which is each, every, any, all, the whole, everyone, whoever. And again, when you populate the list of those that we're here to love, it's kind of hard sometimes when you say, everyone, everyone, all the people in my life, yeah, everyone, every single person and this is an opportunity that we have then how does this happen when belief happens in one's life this belief right this understanding that if you believe that you 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 say to yourself i i am that that he is it this one of a kind yes the chosen one but that the deep inside i i adhere i agree i i see that he is the one that i will believe in and you will experience life, which is the fullness of life in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. The fullness, but also this understanding of being fully devoted to God. Right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, his one and only son, that whoever believes, whoever puts their trust, their faith in right, in him shall not perish, will not experience eternal death, but will experience eternal life in and through Christ Jesus. I think it was important to define that because, again, that was our key scripture of the day in our, in our reading and also uh, of our time of our, our Advent candle lighting with the wreath. But I think it's so important when we contextualize what love really looks like. God who loves us. And it's so important because we see from the beginning to the end that God made a point of redemption to happen within mankind. From tree to tree, the tree in the garden to the tree on Calvary, God's idea was redemption of mankind. And it would happen through this love that would take place, tangible love of Christ Jesus coming to earth, being a man, dying, right? A righteous death for our sins, so that we can be made whole and experience eternal life through Christ Jesus and God. So we think about this. What, what does this mean to us today? And, and we've titled this, Give, Take, Give, Love. Give, Take, Give, Love. And this is what we're thinking about here is we've set the, the groundwork and the foundation as to what love should look like, a sacrificial all-encompassing love of God, redeeming mankind. We see Jesus speaking once again because Jesus did life with people all the time. We see another person, a very intelligent person, one who understood the law of God. And this is from generations and generations. The law was passed down, right? Through Pharisees, through folk that would keep and hold the law so that they could share it with others. And, and when Jesus came again in the midst of many Many centuries of silence and darkness, light came through Christ Jesus. Also, this new knowledge was coming of a Messiah. So we had people questioning and wondering. Of course, Nicodemus talking to Jesus before this point, you know, saying, what must I do to be born again? But also a Pharisee wondering, what must I do? 
to do right before God. What is the law? What is the reason for me living? What is the reason for my existence? What am I here to do? And it's so important because I feel we all are in that search. We all are in that mode of trying to figure out what we're here to do. And Jesus makes it plain. Give, take, give. That kind of love. Matthew 22, 37 through 39. Jesus replied to this man. He says, listen, this is what it's all about. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. He said, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. You're thinking, what in the world does this have to do with Christmas? Everything. The whole reason that God sent his only begotten son so that we can be in relationship with God once again, but also us sharing God with others through this kind of love, a give, take, give love. So let's explain that a little bit further as we dig a little deeper into the verse this morning. To give God's love, we must first give God love. You're like, what? Yeah, to give God's love, we must first give love. God love. See, Jesus replied to this man, wondering, like, what, tell me, what must I do? What law will you point to, Jesus, in this moment? Tell me of the many laws that you want me to adhere to. And Jesus says, look, let me keep it simple for you. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. See, here's the thing, very intelligent person who has it all figured out or they think they do. Listen, I want to tell you what you need to do. I want you to first give God love. And not with just part of yourself, not with just a fragmented self, but with all of yourself. Think about this. With all your heart, with all your soul, your very being, and all of your mind, every aspect of you, give God love. And it's so important that we give this to him that we, we bestow this upon him. And just, just reading this past year from Genesis to Revelation, it ends with worship unto God. It all ends with us worshiping God, with us giving God what he deserves. Love, adoration, respect, reverence, love. And that's what our, our step, our first step has to be, is, is taking our focus of all the things that, that cloud our mind, that confuse our heart, that trouble our soul, and give it to God first. I'm telling you, it's going to be hard to do. It's going to be hard to do. But we must first give God love. Second, to give God's love, because that's the ultimate thing we're trying to do here, is to be a people that, give God, that gives God's love to others. We must take God's love. And you're like, what in the world are you talking about? Take God's love. See, Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Again, that's us giving God love. This is the first and greatest commandment, he said, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. A lot of times we miss this part, as yourself, as yourself, as yourself. And this is not a me-centric, take everything I can from God kind of statement. Mm-mm. What we're talking about here is an understanding that I have placed everything in God's hands. Listen, listen, I have given God all my love, all my adoration. I have given God everything. And I will only take back what is mine to receive and to walk with, what is mine to grow in. And what's been so phenomenal is over the last few years of my life, to watch as I have continually tried, put forth a concerted effort to give God love first, to seek him first in all things, to place things at his feet. When I am waiting for him to pour back what I need, it's everything I need. Everything I need. And, and what else I've seen throughout this journey is what I also take back is peace. What I take back is hope. What I take back is joy. Are you hearing a theme here? What I take back is his love. It changes the way you see things when you know that you're in God's hands. When stuff is hitting the fan, because it will, it's almost as if you're wearing Teflon all over, and when it hits the fan, it never sticks. Why? 
because you have taken on God's love. You have taken on a relationship with God. So it's not if and when. It's when it hits you and how it hits you. It doesn't stick regardless of how difficult it may be, because you've given God love first. You take back God's love and all the other things that try to come at you, regardless of how hard they may be. We got a difficult call this week. Yet again, something financial. But I said, Carrie, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? It's going to be fine. Why? Because we give God love first and we take back all that he wants us to have. And that's peace. That's hope. That's joy. That's love. Regardless of what hits right? We take back those things from him. We have to take God's love. Listen, you cannot give God's love unless you are in a healthy place to give it. If you have not wrestled with God, giving him your love first and worked through things in life, you're not going to be able to give a clean, unadulterated love to others. We got to work this stuff out with him. And when we choose him first, heart, mind, and soul, we work things out with him and we bring back what is ours to take with us, fullness of his love, hope, joy, and peace. And then we're able to give God's love, right? We're able to do it. So how? When, okay, we must give God's love. That's how. To give God's love, we must give God's love. What are you talking about? Think about it. To give God's love, we must give God's love. If you're not healthy and whole, if you've taken things that you shouldn't, if God's not first, you're not going to be able to give God's love. You'll give your love. But the goal for us is to give God's love. He said, love the Lord your God. Remember, Jesus always pointing to God. Love the Lord your God with all your, whole, your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. This true love for others. I'm telling you, ministry is all around you all the time. But if we're not where we should be with God, if we're not taking what we should have from God in a healthy way, we're not going to be able to see and give the love of God in the right way. We must give God's love but you got to be healthy to do so. It's all about giving the fullness of his love. It's about giving the hope. It's about giving the peace, right? It's about giving the joy. It's about giving his love. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Today, more than any other, we should be filled, filled to overflowing, I hope. As we wait in, in, in anticipation with the tension, we should be filled with hope. We should be filled with peace. We should be filled with joy. Most importantly, though, we should be filled with his love, filled with his love to overflowing to others. Let's be a church that shares that kind of love. Let's be people that share that kind of love. Look around you today, tomorrow, this coming week. Who can you love with God's love? You may have to do some homework beforehand, right? Because again, this salvation thing is for everyone. We see that. Everyone. The whole universe, right? You get this picture of the vastness of God's love. And for who? Everyone. You may have to make that decision. Repent. Turn from sin. Ask for forgiveness before God. Because if you believe, you can experience faith in Him. It's you trusting Him. You leaning on Him. You counting on Him. Because He's the only one that sent His only Son to do what could be done only by Him. God, we thank You so much that we get to celebrate love today. Your love. Only the love that You could create. Only the love that was created by Christ Jesus coming. Again, from tree to tree, as we get that visual of the fall of man in the garden and separation through sin happening, we see a man on the tree on Calvary who was building the bridge back to you, God. We have this visual and understanding, God, that through Christ Jesus we can be saved. 
saved, experience salvation and eternity with you, God. All we have to do is believe and ask and repent and turn and begin to walk with you. Help us, God, I pray, to be a church that loves you with everything in us and loves our neighbor as ourselves, a healthy people, loving people. God, we thank you for this time that we've had together and the opportunity to be your church right now. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're still shooting for Christmas Eve service to happen in person, so we hope to see you there. If you're not able uh, and you're only gonna be at home, I wanna challenge you just to maybe grab some candles as a family and you can do the candlelight service with us from home. Six o'clock will be on. We love you guys. We're praying for you. Continue to pray for us, the Foundry Church, who is endeavoring to continue to be the church in the midst of crazy, chaotic times because you guys are never off. You're always staying on and loving your neighbor as yourself. I hope you have a wonderful day. And if I don't see you for Christmas, have a wonderful Christmas. And hey, maybe I'll see you next year, 2021. A new opportunity to think and see things a little differently, hopefully. All right? We love you guys. Happy Sunday. Merry Christmas. Have a great day.